So the recent study we're going to be discussing today asks a somewhat intriguing hypothetical question. Do we owe our existence to gravitational waves? A question that's maybe somewhat difficult to answer at first, but does make sense once you start looking at certain things in, for example, human body, that might have only come as a result of certain collisions in outer space. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss this recent study, discuss the theory behind it, and try to answer the question of, so how likely is it? In other words, could our existence depend on gravitational waves? And would we exist if gravitational waves did not exist in the universe? With the overall short answer being, yeah, looks like they are actually responsible for humans after all. And I guess not just humans, life on Earth in general. But here to try to answer this question, we first of all have to take a look at the table of elements, and specifically the table of elements that tells us where these elements came from. There's actually one on Wikipedia you can find by a user CMG Lee, who made this really easy to understand. And so in essence, elements can be produced by different cosmic events. With this table also kind of telling us how the elements in the universe evolved and how the universe transitioned in the last 13.8 billion years. It naturally all starts with hydrogen and helium that created some of the first stars that then, upon going supernova, resulted in heavier and heavier elements. And so several dozen elements were very likely formed as a result of constant supernova when more and more produced over time. But it wasn't until a few billion years after the existence of the universe that additional elements started to be created in other ways as well. For example, white dwarf explosions would result in certain other elements. But eventually, after a first supernova, a lot of large stars would leave behind tons and tons of neutron stars and of course black holes. But when those neutron stars were in binary systems, and especially binary systems that would be close enough together, because of the total mass and density of these neutron stars, they would start producing interacting gravitational waves. And it's the interaction of these waves that would cause individual neutron stars to slowly lose kinetic energy and to come closer and closer together, and naturally at some point, collide. And today we know that these collisions basically result in a very specific type of an explosion, a highly energetic explosion known as a kilonova, something that has been detected several times now, and something that we know for a fact results in a very specific type of emissions and extremely specific elements. It actually results in what's known as the R process, and in this case a very effective R process, which stands for Rapid Neutron Capture Process, which occurs when a lot of different heavy atoms continuously capture more free neutrons much much faster than an atom can decay, which basically ends up producing heavier and heavier elements in practically seconds. But here it does require an extremely high density of neutrons, specifically something like 10 to the power of 24 per cubic centimeter, and also an extremely high temperature, conditions that can really only be formed in some of the most extreme environments in the universe, such as for example when two neutron stars collide. So for example the temperature alone has to be like a billion Kelvin, and though certain types of extreme supernova can also make this happen, it's really the kilonova that seem to be the most efficient. For example things like gold and platinum, they only seem to be formed in these very powerful events. Events that seem to only last a few milliseconds, but end up forming tremendous amount of heavy elements. The elements that become stable enough to survive for millions of years and then basically go on their merry way across the galaxy until some kind of a star system out there, usually a baby star system, and usually in some kind of a nearby molecular cloud, basically capture all of these elements, eventually incorporating them into new stars and new planets. And so that's the story of gravitational waves and kilonova. But what does it have to do with life on Earth? Well, the study here goes into a little bit of biology and basically identifies certain crucial elements. For example, we know that for life to exist, we obviously need things like carbon, oxygen, and so on. Naturally, things like hydrogen is also required. But all in all, approximately 20 elements are absolutely essential for human life. Most responsible for the formation of various proteins, and most basically a result of various supernova. So, for example, iron in your blood is a result of various supernova over time, and pretty much everything with the atomic number less than 35 is generally a result of supernova. And so that quote from the iconic Carl Sagan, that we're basically all stardust, is actually not far from the truth. But inside the human body there are obviously a lot of other elements, and even a lot of trace elements, 
Like, for example, you do have things like uranium inside of you, and though there have been suggestions that it might have some use, it's probably also just some kind of a contaminant from a lot of industries around us. And although obviously thorium and uranium are both important for basically Earth to maintain its plate tectonics and for essentially life to exist on its surface, by themselves, thorium and uranium are very likely not crucial elements for human life. But there are certain elements inside of us that seem to be first of all not the result of supernova and second of all might also be crucial for life as well. One such element is iodine. And this recent study determined that approximately 96% of all iodine on planet Earth is extremely likely the result of an active R process. And in this case, very likely the result of the R process from neutron stars colliding a long time ago. And in this case, colliding as a result of gravitational waves. And iodine is responsible for a lot of different hormones produced by the thyroid gland. For example, this one, triodothyronine, pretty much controls everything inside our body, including body temperature, heart rate, metabolism, and so on. And so the iodine inside of this hormone is most likely the result of neutron star collisions. Likewise, according to the study, bromine is basically the same, produced in neutron star collisions, and in this case essential for several things in our body. Certain types of white cells, responsible for the immune system, but also responsible for the production of collagen, or essentially development of tissues and the overall architecture inside our body. And so in this case, both of these elements extremely likely came from neutron star collisions and over time got delivered to planet Earth and then through evolution ended up inside our bodies. Likewise, uranium and thorium, which were also produced by those neutron star collisions, are basically the reason life even exists. By continuously heating up our planet and by producing the right geological environment, they allowed Earth to have these permanent conditions for 4.5 billion years, thus giving life a chance to evolve us. And so that idea that gravitational waves are kind of responsible for life on Earth and for human life as well, is not that far from the truth. And here they even suggest that we might find evidence of this iodine produced by these neutron stars in certain types of lunar regolith if we look on the surface of the moon where it was not affected by anything else. Although here I wanted to add one thing that they do not mention in their study. There is one more element that we think was produced by neutron star collisions and that is also absolutely essential for human life. The 42nd element, molybdenum, is very likely a result of neutron star collisions as well. Now technically it can be produced by extremely powerful supernova and so here it's kind of half and half. And more importantly, there are several crucial enzymes inside our body that do contain molybdenum as well. One of them is responsible for promoting oxygen atom transfer, whereas the other one is literally in every single mitochondria inside our body. And then there's the third one that's responsible for producing certain types of reactive oxygen species. And so all three of them are crucial, they're actually important for pretty much every cell inside our body, and all three very likely a result of neutron star collisions billions of years ago. And so to add to that famous Carl Sagan statement that we're all stardust, we're not just stardust, we're also a consequence of tiny ripples from the universe itself, gravitational waves billions of years ago that basically caused neutron stars to collide, forming so many things inside our bodies. And so yeah, that's pretty deep. You're stardust, but you're also an ancient gravitational ripple. Anyway, so that's basically that study in a nutshell, and I thought that the question that's being asked is somewhat intriguing. But the answer is almost definitely yes. Gravitational waves were probably responsible for human life and for a lot of other life on planet Earth. And so on that note, once we have some additional details or we discover something else about neutron stars or gravitational waves, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. There are some additional videos in the description that go through some other stuff, including recent detections. But on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.